This week on TIA, Carrie aims at her first kill on African soil. Brady comes face to face with a black rhino, and I throw a serious curveball at the team from Right and Optics. Swift Bullet Company presents This is Africa. Closed captioning is sponsored by the Zimbabwe Professional Guide Association. Ethics are everything. This is one of my favorite sticks. Uh, it's, a, it's a tripod um, by African Sporting Creations and uh, they offer a lot of stability. What a lot of people tend to do here is adjust their body to fit the stick, save it, and you're going to be unstable. So if the sticks are too high, just lower it, you just pull this leg out, see there? Uh, yeah. If it's okay. too low, you just do the opposite, just uh, take it in and they will raise it up. If you have it too far back, mm -hmm. then you're carrying all the weight at the back. Yeah, that's what If I you have it too about. far forward, then you might have, uh, it might be a little uh, heavy in the front. So, okay. do you golf at all? Yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so similar, similar idea, you know, just imagine that golf stance. Um, your, your front leg kind of in the direction you, you'd be hitting the ball, in this case uh, shooting. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, just make sure you're comfortable. Don't, you don't want your knees bent, um, just a relaxed body position. Something else that's quite helpful is uh, when, we, when we do find um, whatever animals we're after, what people often do is they start searching through yeah, the scope the and you've got, a, you've, got a, <laughs> you've got a small field of view. So mm -hmm. pick it up with your eyes, sort of okay. have, have, a, have a good idea of uh, the, the direction we're looking at. And then you get your, your barrel so like aimed in that direction. So this termite hill over here, you see that bigger one? Yep, have a yeah. crack at it. Perfect. Peter was a great PH and he, you know, he made me feel confident at the same time of saying like, you need to do these things where you're not going to be successful. So it was like the perfect balance of having success, being comfortable, but not being too comfortable that you really, you know, mess it up or something. <laughs> he's the two, he's the one on the right, okay, but he's kind of quartering this way, so we'll just wait for him to turn full broadside. My heart is beating fast. <laughs> just find him, get on him. It's okay, stay with him. He's still only 200 yards. Okay, there you go. On that shoulder. Take him. Just over him. That's okay. Oh, so close. Not, not an easy shot, eh? At a, at a small target like that. But we'll see, we might get back on him again. Don't worry. How's the heart going? Come out faster. <laughs> sure. Did you, I felt uh, very confident, but I it, think I, you pulled, I pulled, yeah, right when yeah, I did it. Okay. It was like that moment of uh, take a breath and then go, and then I was like, ugh. We'll just see what they do. We might still get back on them. Oh boy. Um, you know, I'm probably my the world's worst critic. So I guess maybe that's how Brady and I got into business anyways. We're, very competitive in nature and, you know, very critical in a good way to drive ourselves to success. So I have to be honest, missing, I was, I was kind of disappointed in myself, even though it was the real first hunt. Um, yeah, I wasn't exactly happy about it. a good hit, Carrie. Thank you. Awesome. Oh my gosh. How's that feeling? Awesome. <laughs>
<laughs> that one was well earned. Thank you. <laughs> it's a beautiful setup there. Thank you know, you. We, everything was right. Wind was good. We had the sun at our backs, so there would have been a uh, very little chance of them spotting us, seeing yeah. us back here. But uh, yeah, we still had him make the shot. So. Well, then, let's go take a look at him. He's beautiful. He's really, truly gorgeous. Thank you, Peter. So he gets their first kill in Africa on camera. That's awesome. Oh, look at those horns. Huh? But look at those ivory tips on him. He's just gorgeous. Well done. This is Carrie's first hunt um, for herself. Uh, so yeah, uh, really thrilled and excited to have been a part of it and you, you did exceptionally well. So I think everything we practiced paid off. So yeah, yeah well done. <laughs> I knew exactly, you know, the mistake that I had made. I was just had so much adrenaline and I kind of pulled up. So going into the second one, I knew more so exactly what I needed to do in that moment with all that adrenaline. This mm -hmm. is an amazing first first hunt for her and to start off like this now I think the sky's the limit so <laughs> we might get, we might have an addict on our hands hopefully <laughs> this segment was brought to you by right on optics the bullet the least expensive most important part of your hunt it's the only contact you have with the animal swift bonded core technology provides great accuracy controlled expansion high weight retention, and deadly terminal performance. Swift A-Frame, Scirocco, and the new Breakaway Solid, all bullets without equal. Available in components and loaded ammunition. Contact SwiftBullets.com for product availability. We are a company of firearms professionals, hunters, soldiers, officers, and family. As part of the Right on Promise, we provide the best customer service, including an industry-leading warranty. We won't repair, we'll just replace. We believe a person's hard-earned dollar should buy quality optics at any price point. This segment is brought to you by African Sporting Creations. We've spotted uh, quite a big herd of lechwe down in this pan below us. Uh, a lot of water down here, which is usually where the lechwe like to hang out. There was one decent uh, male that we could see from the top there, but we're going to try and get in a bit closer and get a better look at him. Pretty fresh, uh, young white rhino, pro probably a female cow. Yeah, actually looks like a cow and a calf. I used to get really amped up right when I would see an animal, and now I think that kind of that's calmed down over time. When you get behind the scope and you actually start, now's the time to take a shot. Like your heart rate goes up, you start focusing in, you get that tunnel vision. So it's not him. Just watch that, Tim. I think you need to stop hunting if you don't, it doesn't do something to you as far as your heart rate and, and getting excited. The female's behind him. Here he comes, so he's clear now. Yeah. Looked like a good hit there, Brady. Do you see him? Yep. That's still him there. Okay, he's gonna go down. Good hit. Beautiful lecture. Nice good job. It. Heavy horns, good shape. If, and if you look at him from the side, he's got a nice, yeah, bit of a curve. Gotta give this black rhino some space. Come, come, come. We were walking towards him and then we saw a black rhino come out of the woods. So, uh, we're just going to give him a little bit of room and then take cover here behind this big old acacia tree. Hopefully, hopefully we're not forced to uh, climb it, but <laughs> hey. I've never had to uh, not claim one of my animals that I just shot because of a rhino, so this is definitely a first. Rhino are not an animal that I'm overly used to dealing with. At this stage, I was really, really waiting for that run signal from Peter. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's just letting us know that uh, this is his territory. He's uh, just moved off now, so I think it should be safe to go up there and take a look at this lechwe we got down. Yeah, yeah very nice uh, lechwe bull. 
pretty shape. Um, heavy, heavy horns there, very heavy, thick. And all the way up here, Brady, you can see uh, My grandparents and parents all grew up in very difficult, tough times in South Africa, being non-white. So it's always been very important for us to look out for others. Going through town today and seeing the schools and seeing the extra buildings they created for one, for one example is 150 extra students that now get education. You can't help everyone as much as I think many of us would want to, um, but just seeing you know what you can give back, you do give back like the Tam brothers and that was, I mean, um, off to do a few uh, food deliveries, food parcels. A whole group of children that usually come there uh, to the to the Amy Bell Centre, but due to COVID restrictions and uh, obviously the the risk in that, we've we've had to cancel that a bit. So we still, you know, try and do as much as we can as far as uh, supporting these kids and their families. I love that they're involved in that and that, that's a great example of, of what we should be doing as hunters and what we should be doing as, as world travelers, you know, as we go around. So my hat's off to Tam Safaris and their involvement and in, in helping kind of raise these kids and scholarships and everything they're doing. There's Jack. He's um, disabled, but yeah, yeah he's uh, one of the youngsters that are part of the charity program. Bye! I mean, this is why I think even Brady and I started Ride On. It's the community, it's the people. This is what inspires us. Well, we're here at Zanella's house now. Um, one of our bursary students, Zanella's in grade 10, a great student, and she lost both her legs. Funds raised through um, hunting clients and conservationists. Did some renovations to Zanella's house, built her on a brand new bathroom, um, bedroom, ensuite for her. Obviously made her, her home a wheelchair friendly and just easier for her to Thank get around. Thank you very much. See ya. See ya. This segment was brought to you by the Houston Safari Club Foundation. The Houston Safari Club is for anyone who likes to hunt. It's for the love of the outdoors. It's to give all of us as individuals a voice. Ever wanted to hunt whatever, wherever in the world, somebody in the club has done it and can point you in the right direction. We have met some of our very close friends through Houston Safari Club. I love the Houston Safari Club. I love the Houston Safari Club. I love the Houston Safari Club. Join the Houston Safari Club Foundation to increase your knowledge of the hunting world. This segment is brought to you by Swift Bullet Company. Both Brady and Dave really wanted a black wildebeest trophy. So I decided to throw a bit of competition at the guys. The first person to get a black wildebeest would not wear the full of the day hat the next day. So it was all agreed upon and the competition was on. The wind's in our favor now. We'll maybe just try to drop back down here in this little wash. About 400 yards at the moment. Okay. And we'll be able to maybe sneak up another okay. 150 or so. There's a herd of black wildebeers uh, just up ahead of us here. And they're moving in our direction. We've got some nice cover here. We've got a little dry river bed that we're going to try and make use of. You know, don't matter if it's a springbuck or a black rhino or an elephant, guiding clients, it's still just as exciting as if I'm pulling the trigger or just as exciting as the first day I started hunting. There's a nice little rocky outcrop in there just above us here. We're going to sneak up there and see if we can get a shot at them. Let's just turn to the right now. I'm going to open the sticks up and just get your gun on low and then slide up slowly. Stay as low as you can. So as soon as you've got a clear shot, you can take him. Just stay with him. Yeah, here oh, they come. Yeah, they come. Second from the left. Turn forward side now. 360. Right up that front leg. Just right on him. Probably 350. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> awesome. Good job, bud. Thank you. Awesome, buddy. Well done. Man, what a stalk. <laughs> That's teamwork right there. I like that. We were, I don't even know where the hell I'm sitting in here. You can see not much cover out here. Yeah? Yeah. And 
to get 120 yards from eight black wildebeest bulls. And then my pH counting down the yards by the... Oh, no, that's pretty handy. Oh, that. Good shot. Right on. There, buddy. Yeah, black wildebeest, also known as a white-tailed gnu. You can see that blonde tail at the back there. Well, you can see it's a nice big old bull. Um, big bosses, all these cracks in here. Good indication of age. Um, you can see how he's broken his tip off here and obviously just worn it. Uh, a lot of people say he looks like a rock star because he's got an awesome mohawk on his nose. He's got this beautiful big old mane. His horns go down forward and then up and out. So he's a really interesting trophy and, and really only found here in South Africa and Namibia. Now hopefully the, the B team will be a little bit more quiet from now on, we hope. <laughs> it's been a fantastic day. I think it's time we head back to the camp, maybe yeah. get a cocktail, see what the, the B squad did today. See what the B team got up to today. There we go. Congratulations, sir. Woo! <laughs> I'll wear it with honor. Yeah. Today, our clients from Wrighton Optics, Brady and Dave, you guys are going to be our new professional hunter. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> Ladies, you will be the trackers. Our professional hunters are going to be the clients and this is how we're going to roll. Let's do it. Uh, something doesn't seem right here. Um, I'm behind the steering wheel, so I think we, we got to get my pH. Yeah. Get the show on oh. the go. Does the, does the track represent in the back? <laughs> oh, but everything's on the wrong side. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, well, well. I see the client is already helping the pH with the handbrake. Really small help. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give me a minute. Slow him down. Right here's perfect. There's all. It's always fun when you can get one team versus another team, no matter what you're doing. I'm probably the most competitive guy you'll ever meet. So I'll find you one. Don't worry. Looks like somebody's been there. No Australian tonight. One, Off to your left, two. Mr. Client from America. Yeah. You have a big bull there on your left. Is that an old bull? Yeah, he's an old bull. Look at that. You can tell by the bosses on the top of his head. Yeah. And the spread. The 37 inch spread. He would be a taker if we were buffalo hunting. Can we take it? Did you bring your checkbook? <laughs> Wait, which one do I push to start? It's, it's on, just turn the key. Oh no, the black one. The black one, no. Which, this one? Mm hmm. There we go. <laughs> There's your door. Uh, this is the opposite side. Mine no, over it's here. it's still the same. Though. I know, but there it's just go. like... Let your clutch go. No, you're not in. You're not in. No, Back I'm in. not. There we go. Is it in? Yeah, I think so. No. No. B team, get in the back. This segment was brought to you by Woodbury Taxidermy. So the biggest thing that we also look at too here at Woodbury's is it doesn't matter what type of animal it is or the size of that animal. Everybody brought it here because it's important to them. You know, when we're doing life size stuff with habitat with grasses and bases and the wood that's there and the dirt that's there, all of those little bitty details make a huge difference in the end product. I guarantee you that you'll have it for life. This segment is brought to you by Swift Bullet Company. I may not look like it, but I'm actually from the USA. <laughs> that's, that's a unique American accent. Yeah, yeah. like Louisiana somewhere. <laughs> Down in the bayou. Yeah. Right now, we're just going up this little hill. We're following the terrain. We've got a couple different groups out here. So we're, hey, hey. hey, hey <laughs> I didn't jump in when you said nonsense the last three days. We're gonna get a little elevation so we can kind of see across the land. We got a white spring buck over here. We got a couple over here. We'll take a quick look. You gotta walk. Sorry, buddy. Got a hard right left. Everybody misses, it's okay. I feel so bad. 
thought I was right on him. Do you think I shot over him? He just went over the top of him. Yep. Dave really embraced his role. I mean, he took it seriously from get-go, from as soon as they knew what, what they were up for. We spotted a couple males over the ridge here. Uh, moving pretty quickly, but I think we were able to get in front of them just enough. So we're gonna play the wind up here, see if we can get some eyes on them. See if we can get you one. Dave must have been hunting with one heck of a pH before because he knew how to do everything. I was one of those clients where I was just ready to pull the trigger. My finger was itching and Dave was like, no, hang on, that's, it's not big enough. It's females. It's, you know, he really wanted to get that big male. Okay, once they stop about there, Sarah will come in. She's going to put up the sticks for you. Wait for a good shot, okay? You're going to have a lot of time on this one. Take your time. If I can get prone, I'll send and shoot. You'd, You'd be the best. best. Yeah. Okay. You do so many small things that it takes PHs years and years to learn, you know, little tricks, um, coming over the top, using the wind, the way he stalked, used brush, used any obstacles to get up close to Springback, which paid off in the end. The right and optics, really, really good optics. They, they work well out in the field. The clear, clear glass, I mean, the scopes are good up until far distances, long distances, we tested them. Didn't have any problems with the scopes in the field. Binoculars, great optics, good for spotting animals, judging animals at long distances. It always makes a huge difference, especially from a guide's perspective. You know, being able to judge an animal at a, at a long distance. Really, really impressed with the, the ride-on um, optics we had this week. I was warned before I went on my first African safari that like, careful because it gets you and I was like nah just go hunt once and it'll be a cool experience and at least I did it right kind of checked that one off and now I'm like all right I gotta plan my next trip before this trip's even over so yeah I'll definitely be back that's it for this week folks if you're dreaming of coming to Africa get hold of me Andy at TIA5.com or visit the website www.tia5.com we'll see you right here next time on TIA Next time on This Is Africa, Andy finds himself on the Alaska Peninsula on a giant coastal brown bear hunt.